but this is related to my talk anyway. Okay, okay. So yeah, I heard you have prompts, right? Very good. Cool. So just a quick introduction to Chin. Uh, she's a data engineer. And uh, she also has a background in aerospace engineering and in computational modeling. And she's going to be talking a little bit uh, to us today about Singapore weather. I have to say, I saw your EuroPython talk and I used that URL, the URL with the, with the time series for the Singapore API, <laughs> with the Singapore API weather for a, a personal project of mine. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Today is going to be a bit cool. different. Okay. Oh, cool. so, so I'm looking forward to that then. So thank you very much. Welcome. And the floor is yours. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Okay. I'm with the umbrella. So it's something related to my talk. And the question we're trying to answer is that is rainfall really getting heavier? And this is part of my personal project on building a weather forecasting pipeline with Singapore Weather Station data. Okay, so, yeah, why am I interested in this? Because uh, I'm yeah, so I'm a data engineer in title and based in sunny Singapore, as you can see right now. And yeah, I have a background in aerospace engineering, computational modeling, and I love pandas, and I do contribute to pandas from time to time. And if you're wondering where is Singapore, it's actually at, at near the equator, just one degree north, uh, here. So it's actually a country, not a province in China. So yeah, it's a tropical country where we do have our four seasons, which are either cold and rainy, which is during the monsoons, the northeast monsoon season, or it could be warm and dry. It could be really extremely hot, like I'm talking about 35, 36 degrees Celsius, or it could be really hot and stormy, which is the forecast for today. <laughs> and in recent years, we are actually experiencing this phenomenon called ponding. So. What do we call ponding? Because we call ponding as, you know, not really flooding, as in not like, it's sort of flooding, but not really ponding. And somehow it happens when you have a once in 50 years type of rain. Well, I have no idea why that ever since our first major ponding incident, we have been getting incidents more than once every year. So I think I have a lot of experience in once every 50 years flood. Yeah. So, in complete and in context, since 2018, Singapore had more than 20 flash floods. And when I speak about flash floods, even your umbrella is not going to protect you from getting wet. And it was discovered that majority of the floods were caused by intense rain. It is not caused by block drains. And Singapore actually already has a very good drainage system ever since the uh, infamous Orchard Road ponding incident back in 2011. So this brings me to this question of, could we predict heavier rainfall with our weather data? First up, we need to extract the weather data. We, we do have through data.gov.sg, which is a open data portal, which actually provides us with real-time API. And it is actually open government data that's available under Singapore Open Data License. And with the sensors, they actually provide almost minute by minute weather station readings. But usually the worst case is whereby they want to report the weather at the point of time. But if we want to scrap weather data for specific, for like, um, for example, uh, the Changi weather station whereby does, whereby and our, our environment agency actually does the climate survey. And we need to scrap multi-day data from the API. So 
we look at the API, like how does how is it being used? We look at how so that you request URL, we look at the schema, and then we notice that it's actually a nested JSON format. So we do need to do a little bit more of uh, data manipulation in pandas to sort of extract the data. So which is why I actually come up with my with my old script. Call it, like you know, scraping the meteorological data from the data got data for SG APIs so that I can just keep running and running the script. And how I how, and how I created that script is that I use the request library to send HTTP requests to the API so that I can get those data and then automate the automate the scraping of of, of the a, the data from the API for a specific time period. And right now, um, right now, what, uh, what my script can support would be the typical weather readings like air temperature, rainfall, humidity, wind direction, wind speed, and I can and I can actually script data for continuous time range and specific weather station. And when I was designing this script, I actually faced some slow connection problems, so I had to keep retrying and I need to automate the retry script. Sometimes, like maybe on New Year's Day, uh, nobody's working and then you don't have data for that particular day. So we, I also need to take into account this problem because I need to return an empty data frame with the same column name as if they were data for a specific day. If not, it's gonna give me an error message. And as for the nested JSON, I uh, what I did was I just extract the desired station and readings, and then concatenate them back with a time step, something like this. So when I try to pass, uh, when I try to pass my JSON output into pandas, then I get this style of format, the nested JSON format. So I try to extract the JSON in the column which has the JSON, and then I extract it. And then I need to reset my index so that I can get a nice sequence corresponding to at the timeline. And then after which I do the type stamp and the reading is concatenation to get my data. Okay. And then now that I've set up the that's set up the data pre the data extraction. And then I actually save it to save it to CSV or like some data. So it could be a database, or, but in my case, I'm lazy, so I just use the CSV. And with that, I I managed to collect from the API data for about four years. So with that, which brings me to the main crux of this talk, which is Singapore rainfall data a four year time series analysis, and hopefully a weather prediction pipeline. Okay, so to be able to, for comparison with the official climate studies by the, by the, by, by the Singapore authorities, I chose the same weather station as what they did, which is the Changi weather station. And then analysis time frame is from 2nd December to 30th November, so which is about four years. And before we do it, before I, we conduct any time series analysis, we need to extract the trend and seasonality from the rainfall data, which in this case is by five, is by five minute intervals. But if, we, but then if we just plot out the data by five minute intervals, it wouldn't be really meaningful, right? Because what is more important is how much rain is there in each day. Because when it starts raining and it keeps raining and raining and raining throughout the day, you're going to accumulate a lot of rainfall and it will raise to and if the rainfall within an hour or within the day is too heavy, our drainage system would not be able to clear the rain in time so for the so from now from from this point onwards we are going to be analyzing 
data that has been pre-processed and it is taking into account like what's the total daily or it's, it's total weekly or total monthly rainfall at the particular weather station. So if you take a look at like what's the accumulative daily rainfall in Singapore, you can see that you don't really, really see much of a trend, except that you see a very, very long spike somewhere in December 2019. Um, so if you can look at that particular very prominent spike, it's actually around like, December 2019, whereby the daily rainfall actually exceeded 140 millimeters. So like, for reference, in Singapore, 70 millimeter of rainfall is considered heavy rainfall in a day. So can you imagine like, double that of what is considered heavy rainfall? Insane, right? Now, what about the weekly sampling of rainfall, the total rainfall? So you can still see that huge, enormous, abnormal, abnormal spike around December. And then you can also start to, but then if we ignore that spike, right, you can also see that no, there are, like, you can see that like, somewhere in 2018, you already see oh, another abnormal spike. And it does seem that like, 20, like 2017 seems okay. 2018, you see that it's getting heavier. 2019, you see that it, it's significantly heavier. So what's going to be the rainfall like this month? Oh, if, if we look at the monthly rainfall, then you start to see that something's not that right. Because if I, because, okay, so, so for some context, we are, we have four seasons and it's con, it, it corresponds to our rainfall. So, okay, so if you take a look at, so remember this, and then you take a look at the monthly number of rain days. You start to see that, like, Hey, how come my in May 2020 I am getting more rainfall and then I'm actually getting a lot more rain than in June? It's not monsoon. Well, but I don't know, but you know, other than those anomalies. It does seem pretty normal, right? So, okay, so decide that, well, let's give it a try. Like, let's see whether I can create a forecasting pipeline that can predict rainfall. So, do you do that? I use a stats model.tsa. Uh, yeah, that's all that's for time series analysis. And then before I determine whether I can conduct my prediction, I look at stationarity, I also look at the patterns. And then also look at the correlate autocorrelation. So those three those three factors are actually pretty important. So because if it's not if the time series is not stationary, like then um I don't think I can use my models. If this if my if I look at the time series and it's mainly white noise, then I'm predicting white noise. And if there's not much autocorrelation, then it affects which model I'm going to use. So like for stationary for stationarity, right? I did a test and then okay, the time series is stationary. All good. And then I try to analyze the trend, the seasonality with a series of moving averages. Well, my attempt at looking at the seasonality wasn't too successful when I was looking at a seven-day rolling wind, rolling total rainfall. But, I, but it does seem that there's some trend and some seasonality when you look at a 30 day rolling total rainfall, right? So, okay, let's do a decomposition, you know. But then when I took a closer look and I look at, like, like I look at the time period from around October to January, which is usually our Northeast monsoon season. 
you can see that you know, for the monsoon season between 2017-2018, it's it is actually higher compared with that from like December 2018 to January 2018. But then when but then as I mentioned earlier, there is that abnormal abnormally high rainfall at December 2019. So is the rainfall going to be much higher or is it going to be lower? That's a question mark. In a sense, I can't really guess whether there's some seasonality, there's some trend. So I did a STL decomposition of the daily rainfall as well as the monthly rainfall. And it does seem that daily rainfall isn't that much of a seasonality. But I could see some seasonality and some trend for my monthly rainfall. So maybe, just maybe, we might have I might have a chance at trying to predict the daily rainfall or monthly rainfall. But the problem is that what's more important? It's a daily rainfall which is more important, right? Compared with a monthly rainfall. Because I need to know how much drainage, how much drainage I need for the day. And then if I look at the autocorrelation of the daily rainfall, right? Um the thought, it, it seems that the daily rainfall is not is not that closely correlated with its own lag values, which might pose some difficulties in terms of having a time series model. But then for monthly, it seems a little bit more optimistic, but still it doesn't really meet my objective. So just to recap, could we predict heavier rainfall with the weather data? With those information, I decided to give it a try using ARIMA because move because when I look at the moving averages, there seems to be some trend, there seems to be a bit of seasonality. And it's not that and although the auto regress the auto, although like when I look at the auto like auto correlation, like it's a bit low, but at least it's not it's very low. So I decided to try it out with Arima models, and because and like bef and we, like before we apply it to predict for like a time a time period like let's say sixty days, we need to apply rolling forecast technique on the time series forecasting model, and then we and then with that we try to optimize is the model with uh, like mean square error or uh, in this case I use a root mean square error and then with the optimized order parameters I use that to run a rolling forecast for the next like, the 60 days or it could be the next 12 months but in this case I'm just going to focus on the daily forecast uh, and I try to run daily forecast with Arima it seems that the predictor value is significantly lower compared with the observed values in the past few months. And I'm already using the most optimized ARIMA model. So, was, that, so to look at the result was a little disappointing. Looking at the forecasting for the monthly rainfall, the, the optimized model for ARIMA, well, it does seem a little bit more promising besides the, besides the fact that the predicted value use the predicted value for December 2019 was significantly lower compared to what was observed. And that was then that corresponds with the month whereby it had the highest rainfall on record in the month. So in short, there are some key takeaways from this exploration is that with climate change, it seems that the rainfall patterns are actually becoming more extreme and hence making it more challenging to predict. As, as you recall, 
it, we had the highest rainfall on record in December 2019, and it corresponds with the northeast monsoon season. But, but besides that, on anom that anomalous data point, we also had higher than expected rainfall in a non-monsoon month, and that corresponds with an earlier than expected monsoon. This might imply that our seasons might be changing, and our and our rainfall is right. Our rain our rain season may actually be coming earlier than usual. And while I'm while this exploration is currently is using many ARIMA models, but when we look at the time series analysis, it's it seems that rainfall data from the weather station. And ARIMA may not be sufficient enough to predict more erratic spikes in daily rainfall. And even if we were to try uh, like other more sophisticated models, like maybe like deep learning models, it may still not be we may still not be able to predict those highly erratic spikes that accurately, especially for the daily rainfall, due to the the relatively low auto correlation and also not much seasonality to begin with and with that i guess i have to be resigned to yet another once in 50 year flood in goodness knows when yeah and yeah thank you and feel free to reach out to me via this social media platforms and you could also check out my api scrapping project on github thank you that was so awesome thank you so much <laughs> yes it was really really interesting um let's see do we have any questions on this Stream any questions on YouTube? Well, so somewhat periodic, but yeah, somewhat periodic actually. Okay, so yeah, the question is if there is a bar charge showing periodic behavior. Oh, uh, well, it's almost periodic. Well, besides, besides like a bit of shift in like this year's this year's this year's statistics, but otherwise it's mostly, I mean it's mostly it's mostly periodic, mostly seasonal. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see. Just that the rainfall is. I think it, I mean, in terms of more data, right? I think, yes, it will help to have more data. In fact, that is a problem that the, I think does, I think the Singapore Public Utilities Board has considered and they are, and they are looking to, and they are, they are looking to enhance the use of meteorological data with even more sensors on their, even more sensors on the like water stations. Yeah, I think that yeah, I think they are still trying to resolve the problem with more sensors and like more efforts on data analytics to predict to predict and forecast like heavier rains. Because while they may while they have already tried to improve the drainage system, but there is so much that they could do. Yeah, there's only so much that they could do. They can't keep digging drains forever. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so I have a question for you then. Uh, so for the newbies in Python and for the newbies around that they're looking for to start on as a data engineer, do you would you have any any advice for them? Oh, data engineer. Well. I think, I mean, yeah, 
So data engineers might seem to be the not, I mean, people think a lot about data scientists, but then they think, but then they don't really think a lot about data engineers. And then they think that, you know, data analysts are somewhere here and there, but you know, like for data engineering, right? I think some tips would be that like, you really have to get your hands dirty. Yeah. Like really dirty. <laughs> So, um, because the well, data is always dirty. So, in a sense, it helps to have a lot, it, it a lot of patience and a lot of, like, and you also need to put in a lot of effort to catch up on what are the latest technologies and also keep up with the coding. So, coming from because I don't because well, I come from a relative like a technical background, but I, but my my CS. It's not computer science, so I was. I so I also had a lot of a lot of learning to do to be able to progress as a data engineer. Okay, okay. So it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot of work. But it's but then you are helping people to do their work too, and and you know, no two pipelines are the same. Cool. Well, thank you. So yeah, Martin is in the comments as well saying that um, uh, there was a very interesting talk and uh, he hopes his disasters can be prevented somehow. So thank the you. Good news is, the good news is there was less flash floods last year. The bad news is that we still have flash floods this year and we have one soon right now. So I'm hoping that I don't get stuck in one of those flash floods yeah we hope so too <laughs> well thank you very very much uh we hope you're enjoying pyjamas thank you and we we'll see you soon for your next talk right because <laughs> <laughs> you're this awesome thank you okay <laughs>